Discussing the upcoming Hungarian elections is difficult. Over 40 political parties are registered to compete nationally, none of which individually could possibly touch Viktor Orban's governing coalition of Fidesz and the KDNP. This would largely suggest that the election will be a walk in the park for Fidesz. They'll retain power, maybe even regain a two-thirds majority, the opposition will remain a fractured mess and business will continue as usual. But what if the opposition did unite? What if the opposition got behind single candidates? Is that a possibility? Before I begin, it's necessary to say a few words on Orban and his modus operandi. If you're interested in a more in-depth discussion of this, I recommend watching my very thorough Who is Viktor Orban video. In any case, the important tenet of Orban's regime in this case is his concept of the central force. The basic idea is that Fidesz is an all-encompassing party of the centre, sandwiched between the far-right Jobbik and the numerous groups of the left. This notion was bolstered with a change in electoral law implemented by Fidesz, reducing the number of seats in the National Assembly to 199, 106 of which are elected via a first-past-the-post system. The point is here that, due to the fractured and embattled nature of the opposition, even were Fidesz to scrape 30% of the votes in a constituency, it would likely still be enough to retain or win the seat. So, the left cannot win an election because they lack unity, the right-wing Jobbik cannot win an election because the left splits the opposition vote, something we'll come back to later, leaving Fidesz in a secure position. To compound this further, Orban passed a law making it illegal to spread political adverts via private media. At the same time, the public media board has been successfully colonised by Fidesz loyalists, so, not only are electoral laws heavily skewed in favour of Fidesz, but on top of that, the political messages the public receives are largely mediated through the lens of Fidesz support too. This is Orban's so-called central force and illiberal democracy working together. This doesn't preclude Orban from challenge though. The main threat is a coordinated opposition involving parties working together to oust the Fidesz-led government. Recently, this has brought great success and rooted Fidesz from a 20-year stronghold in the city of Hudmezor Varshahe. The incumbent Istvan Almasi died in November, leaving the seat open for contestation. Peter Marquise won in the by-election in February and did so with an impressive 16-point lead. This was because he not only ran as an independent, but also with the backing of the Socialists, Jobbik and the LMP. This gives a small flavour of what could happen were the opposition to coordinate themselves effectively. In fact, looking at this graphic compiled by Reuters, had the opposition candidates formed a tentative alliance during the 2014 elections, it would have been a no contest. Here are the results of the 2014 elections in terms of electoral districts. It's plain to see a clear victory for Fidesz. However, here is another graphic summarising the results were the opposition parties to have cooperated and backed a single candidate. The task for Orban then is to keep the opposition as divided as possible. And now we come to Jobbik. Although Jobbik have been able to call themselves the largest opposition force to Fidesz in recent years, this has not hindered Fidesz. In fact, it's probably done the opposite. In line with the Fidesz notion of the central power, Fidesz has been able to use Jobbik as a threat, not only nationally but also internationally, as what could possibly happen were Fidesz to lose power. Thus, electoral reforms are framed as safeguarding Hungary from the threat of the extreme right, or co-opting key Jobbik policy points is framed as disarming a virulent opposition and bringing some of their voters into the supposedly more moderate Fidesz fold. In actual fact, the reality is now slightly different. Practically speaking, Fidesz has moved further to the right than Jobbik, and Jobbik now are best seen as a national conservative movement whether you regard this transformation as genuine or not. This entire campaign for Fidesz has been centred around immigration, protecting Hungarian ethnic and national identity, and proposing the expulsion of apparently subversive non-governmental organisations seeking to alter the fabric of the country. Indeed, in a speech to the Hungarian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Orbán stated that the three prerequisites of successful rule for Fidesz are 
We mustn't allow a single migrant into Hungary. We need to protect the border fence and have Brussels pay for it, or at least for half of it. We must banish from Hungary those organizing immigration. I should state, in reference to the first point, I have seen reports that state that Orban has let in over 1,000 migrants into Hungary surreptitiously. Also, on the last point, we must banish from Hungary those organizing immigration. It seems especially pertinent. In light of another campaign speech given by Orban in which he hauntingly stated, We are gentle and cheerful people. We are neither blind nor stupid. After the election, we will take moral, political and legal vengeance. On top of Jobbik aiding Orban in shoring up the morality of his government, they have also contributed to the splintering of the opposition. Jobbik is just as antithetical to the left-wing MSZP and the DK as they are to Orban. Not so much due to ideological differences, although these do exist, but more due to a generational divide. Jobbik C. Fides, the MSZP and the DK, founded by former socialist Prime Minister Ferenc Gyurcsang, as of a bygone generation, a generation that betrayed Hungary post the fall of communism. Indeed, Jobbik often refer to themselves as of the 2006 generation, drawing attention to a year of protests that turned violent after Gyurcsang's infamous Otsod speech. The government forces unleashed rubber bullets at the protesters, and this has still left an indelible scar on relations. When asked about the possibility of Jobbik working with either the MSZP or the DK, Party vice leader Janos Volner remarked that Jobbik would never cooperate with Gyurcsang or his eye-shooting associates in the MSZP. This is despite some tentative steps from Gyurcsang, suggesting that some small smatterings of cooperation were possible, theoretically, anyway. But then the left can't even agree amongst themselves. On the 18th of March, leaders of the MSZP, the DK and the LNP met to initiate talks. It should be noted that Jobbik were also invited, but refused to attend. Actually, Jobbik were still, nevertheless, the centre of attention. The LNP, or politics can be different, stressed the importance of building bridges with Jobbik in order to garner enough votes against Orban. The DK and the MSZP, on the other hand, believe Orban can still be beaten without them. Prime Ministerial candidate for the LNP, Bernadette Zell, stated that only the LNP is committed to full-scale, non-partisan cooperation. There is, again, a notable generational divide here. The LNP, a green liberal party, is similar to Jobbik in that they are a novel and youthful party. They arrived on the scene in 2009 and surprisingly won 16 seats in the National Assembly the next year, smashing the 5% threshold. Some within the party have been advocating for working with Jobbik since 2011, and Jobbik themselves have even drawn equivalences between themselves and the LNP, seeing both parties as parties of the 21st century, a new generation of politics and political reform. Problem with this is Gabor Volna of Jobbik has already said that Jobbik will run candidates in all 106 constituencies. After the failure of the meeting on the 18th of March, Jobbik and the LNP met to discuss possible cooperation. However, even if this were to occur, it would be unlikely to be successful. Jobbik and the LNP are very different politically, and Jobbik supporters would likely not vote for the LNP were Jobbik candidates to be withdrawn. Jobbik has already been hemorrhaging votes to Fidesz in light of the migrant crisis, and there is nothing to say that this wouldn't be the result of cooperation with a left-wing outfit. And this is the crux of it, there is no coordination amongst the left, because their visions are very different. The MSZP and the DK have an obvious affinity, one being an offshoot from the other, but they couldn't come close to amassing the votes needed. Even if Jobbik and the so-called democratic opposition could win enough seats and scrape together a coalition, what on earth would this look like? Jobbik will likely win the most votes of any single party amongst the opposition, and so would be able to lead the way in government formation. Sure, the MSZP and the DK could perhaps be open to local coordination to oust Orban, but forming an actual government, now that seems a step too far, and in any case, Jobbik would never enter into such an agreement anyway, so what's the point in even speculating? So we've got a situation whereby the opposition cannot coordinate a campaign, and we've got a situation whereby any sustainable government seems a pie-in-the-sky fantasy without Fidesz. The newly elected mayor of Hudmezovar Shahe, Peter Markize, is, as a result, 
encouraging voters to do the work the opposition parties are unable to do themselves. He has launched a website outlining which candidates are most likely to topple Fidesz in each district, and is thus urging voters to cast partisanship aside and vote accordingly. But again, the majority of Hungarians don't want Fidesz, sure, but they also don't support an anyone but Fidesz approach either, and again, what on earth would a government without Fidesz look like? It's anyone's guess. So, in the end, it seems like a fruitless and hopeless task. This, of course, has discounted some dirty tactics initiated by Fidesz themselves to make the attempts of the opposition even more cumbersome, as if they weren't so already. Jobbik has recently been fined a total of $2.6 million for accepting forbidden campaign contributions. Basically, the party obtained discounted billboards from media oligarch and former Fidesz supporter Laho Simiska, and this can be seen as the continuation of a spat between Orban and his former ally. Also, numerous bogus parties have emerged subsequent to a new Fidesz passed electoral law. Basically, for a candidate to run, they must gather 500 signatures of endorsement. Now, under the new law, any individual can sign an endorsement for more than one candidate. Thus, numerous parties have emerged in districts with 500 signatures of endorsement that seem to be direct forgeries of Fidesz endorsement lists. These parties have then been bolstered by Fidesz's financial contributions. Yet another trick of the incumbents to split the vote of the opposition. So, that is the Hungarian election in a nutshell. A complete mess and one by design at that. If you're interested in analysis of Orban and how he rationalises his behaviour, I advise watching my video Who is Viktor Orban for further clarification. If you're interested in Jobbik, I've got a video on them as well. Despite the opposition actually having a very real chance of upending the Orban regime, their ability to cooperate ultimately undermines any ambitions they may have, as does the incomprehensibility of any governmental project after the election. If ever you wanted to see the politics of the central force in action, well, this is it. Thanks a lot for watching the video. As always, if you liked the video, please click like and do subscribe if you haven't already. If you didn't, click dislike, leave a comment and tell me where I went wrong. As always, huge thank you to my patrons. It's thanks to you guys that these videos are regular. If you like what I do and it's within your means to do so, please do consider becoming a patron yourself. Thanks a lot and until next time.